All right. So this question, there seems to be some confusion about. There are different, two different methods to solving this. We're going to take the simplest route. And we're going to start by realizing what's our first step in every one of these kinds of questions. Adding and subtracting rational expressions, you always want to do what first? Lorena. Parentheses. Parentheses. Yay. Around all those binomials. All of the binomials get parentheses. Unless you do that, you're bound to, you're in, you know, it's, it's dangerous if you don't do that, okay? Those, those wild negatives could get you, and you might miss out on something. All right, so next step. Now that we've got our parentheses in there, what do we do now? We've got a problem because we can't, how do we find our lowest common denominator when they're kind of similar but different? Okay, we factor, but what do we do to factor? Yes, Catherine? What are we going to factor? What would we like to have as a lowest common denominator? Uh, seven minus, B minus seven. We'd like to have B minus 7, right? We'd love to have B minus 7 as the lowest common denominator. So I'm going to put it over here. But the problem is we have 7 minus B here. So how do we straighten out 7 minus B? What is 7 minus B equal to? Times negative 1. Oh, really? Is it that simple? Yes. It means 7 minus B is equal to negative 1 onto B minus 7. Yes. Where did you learn that? You. Yeah, we learned that, and you guys have to know that. Some, I see that part of the problem was that some people are still unsure of that. You must, whatever it takes, memorize it, practice it, look it over, go on YouTube, redo it 50 times, write it out in the lines, whatever you have to do. You've got to remember this basic principle without any hesitation. 7 minus b is simply negative 1 onto b minus 7, okay? And now, now, we go ahead and... Now what's going to happen here is this now is negative, I'm going to rewrite it, 3 minus b over b minus 7 is plus 2b minus 5, okay, in parentheses. Uh, and now on the bottom it's minus 1 onto b minus 7, looking good. Now what can we do to get that common denominator to be b minus 7? Because it's not yet. We'd love it to be, but it isn't. So what can we do? What do we notice? What did we learn earlier today, Christian? Um, well, first of all, is it negative one really necessary? Or can it just be a negative? It can just be like a negative. So that, that makes it easier. You can move that to the numerator. So That's right. Be negative on the outside. Right. That, if that helps, you, that one maybe confuses you. I don't know if, you, if this makes more sense. Remember what we did? Plus one over negative two is equal to negative one over plus two, isn't it? Because a plus and a minus is negative one half, and a plus and a minus is equal to negative one half. In both cases, they're negative a half. Right? So same thing here, a positive, negative, right? All right, 3 minus b over b minus 7. All right, now this is now what, Catherine? A positive and a negative is a? Negative. Right. So we've got 2b minus 5 over b minus 7. And look what we've got. We've got what we wanted. We got our b minus 7. And this problem now becomes relatively simple because we're back to section 10-4, remember? When we had like denominators, the same denominator? So what's our denominator? B minus, B minus 7. Now you're capable of this, I know you guys, but what do we write over here? Do we have to compensate anything? No. No, we don't. 3 minus B, keep going, Arthur. 3 minus B minus, oh, and then you distribute two. the negative to the 2B and the negative 5, so you get minus 2B plus 5. Good, good. Excellent. And it's already in collect, you can already collect like terms like that in that order, so. That's right. So we're going to rewrite it, and we get, uh, yeah, you're right. We've got 3, well, we got 3 plus 5 minus three. B minus 3B. Yeah. Minus 2B, sorry. I know what you mean. And that's over B minus 7, and I'm just going to go ahead and collect like terms, and we get negative 3B plus 8 over B minus 7. Is there anything on, oh, anything else we can do? Nope. Oh, I got A minus 3 B minus 7. That'd be fine. Guys, 8 minus 3B over B, 8 minus 3B over B minus 7, same thing. It's the same. Just community. No problem. All right. So what about this one? There's no tricky negatives. There's no nothing flipped around. So what is our common denominator? The common denominator is X plus 3 and X plus X plus 3 and X plus 3. Okay, so X plus that's three squared. Same yeah, thing. yeah, same thing, but that's so exactly so right. You multiply the left part of the. Let me get the two cats. X plus 3, can I just put X plus 3 squared? Yeah. Again, I want to just mention this. Remember our game here? Look, 
x plus 3, does it divide into anything? Does the x plus 3 divide into x plus 3 squared? No. It does. Well, it, yeah, it does. It, it divides evenly into that. So do we write it down? No. No. But does x plus 3 squared divide into anything? No. 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 So we have to write it down. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Would it okay. only x plus 3 be left? So when you write that I don't know what you mean, x plus 3 left. Because there's 3x plus 3. Because it's no, 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 no. That's not the way to think about it. There's this. Does this divide into this evenly? It does. Or should I just take the greatest number? No, you don't do x plus 3 cubed. That we've learned that. That would be, it wouldn't be, it would be a common denominator, but it would not be the lowest common denominator. Okay? That, that's, it's the same thing as if we had x and x squared. As our lowest common denominator, it would be x squared. It's the same, except it happens to be, you yeah. see, x plus 3, but it's just, you deal with it the same way. Uh, okay? Yes. Yes, it is. So uh, go ahead, Arthur, let's finish it off. So you, just, you would have distributed x plus 3 to, to x plus 3 and to 2. Right. So you would get 2x, so you would distribute it, you would get 2x, Plus six, plus four. Yeah. Oh, right. And then it's already in the order, so you can just add it like that, and you get two x plus ten, x plus three squared. Good. Over. Plus five. Yes, two okay. onto x plus five because we're taking the greatest common factor out. Or this is both right. Or over x plus three. This is another way to write it, and this, they're both right, and there's nothing wrong with either one of those. It's always good to do this because you never know. This might have. In some cases, this will, will can cancel with that. And so you do have to go the extra mile. Oh, you got to go ahead. I see that can factor. Maybe, maybe I should because you never know. It might cancel. So good. Yes, Christian. You got it right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Good job. Okay. T to the 8th minus 81. This is just a quick reminder that you have to continue to factor as long as you possibly can. This is equal to, because it's difference of squares, it's T to the 4th plus 9 times T to the 4th minus 9. Well, we can't factor anything that's a sum of squares, but we can continue to factor the difference of more squares. t to the fourth is a perfect square. So it is 9. So that ends up being t squared minus 3 out of t squared plus 3 by the same, very same factory by difference of squares rules. And guess what? That's all you can do. Why? Because you can't do sum of squares. You can't factor that. You can't factor that because 3 is not a square root, and that's a sum of squares. That's how you know you're done. This is not done. You got to continue all the way through. Sometimes it's two or even three levels factoring. Yeah.